All right, folks in cyberspace, we are live, we are live, and we are live. Uh, at this time, I want to welcome you to focus on Liberia. For those of you who have been uh, monitoring a little bit of confusion here, uh, it's a new way that we have discovered to go live on Facebook. And I couldn't tell whether or not we're live. But hey, we are live and we are live. This is Focus on Liberia. My name is Anson Nsie, and this is our program, The Hour of Politics, with me, Anson Nsie. Uh, in today's discussion of The Hour of Politics, we have seated as our guest, Mr. Steve Bole, AKA Mose Mose, as most of you people know him on Facebook. We have also invited Mr. Anthony Gay, and we are also expecting one of our analysts here at Focus on Liberia in person of Mr. Weyman Kone. And so folks in server space, I want to officially welcome you to our program, The Hour of Politics with me, Anson and CA. And I'm sure you are wondering, why are you here? We are here to discuss the topic, assessing the possibility of the opposition victory come 2023. We want to know how the opposition is standing. Election is within, I want to put it at, uh, you know, three years or maybe two years, somebody will say. And so we thought to reach out to some members in the opposition block to come and share with us their thoughts, the prospects, the plans, and what they're up to. How can they pull this much in a victory that they need comes 2023? Steve Bullet right now is comfortably seated. We are waiting for the other guest, Anthony Gay, and our FOL analyst, Mr. Weyman Kooning. At this time, we will want to welcome Steve Bolle. Uh, Mr. Steve Bolle, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, Mr. C. Uh, thanks to Focus on Liberia as usual. <clears throat> I want to say thank you for the invite and I'm here tonight for us to talk about Liberia as usual. Thank you so much. The man Steve Bolle there, as you all know him, he's Mose Mose. He does not need any formal introduction. Uh, he has come across as an advocate, a man who speaks fearlessly, articulates the issue, and wherever he sees wrong, he points it out. And we are here with him. This time around, we have the opposition block on our microscope. We are assessing a possible victory for the opposition comes 2023. So Steve, first of all, let's get started like this. The opposition from the time the CDC government took over has been doing what any opposition bloc would do. To criticize, some people will say constructively, others will disagree, but they have been doing what they are supposed to do, to critique the government and hold eight feet to the fire. And that you have been doing. But many people are confused. Who are the opposition? So that would be my first question to you. What is the political composition of the opposition block? I mean, tell me, what is the composition of the opposition block? Who all make up the opposition? Thank you, Mr. C. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to, first of all, as usual, like I've always said, and I will continue to say, as long as I have the opportunity to speak to the Liberian people via social media, whether it's in um, groups or privately, I'd like to say, or publicly, I always like to remember the Liberian people that they're the most important people. You know, um, when you and I leave our jobs, friends, family, loved ones, children, and other activities, and we come on to social media, we come on here because of the Liberian people. And I think we must acknowledge them every time we have the opportunity to do so. So I still believe in that context that the Liberian people are the most important people. I also want to um, remind the Liberian people as well in the word that um, the Liberian women are the most beautiful women on earth. And that is just a fact. And uh, Mr. C, I think you can bear witness to that fact. But let's get to the issue here because I think this is a critical question that needs to be, to be answered. You see, um, when it comes to opposition, people see it more as a title. Uh, but truly speaking, it's, it's, it's bigger than a title. I believe the opposition is not restricted to political parties. I really do believe so. 
I really do believe that the opposition is not restricted to a group of people. I really do believe so. I believe the opposition um, incorporates even seditions that are not um, happy with how the country is going. Um, I believe the opposition is uh, that market woman who uh, might be termed as maybe not educated. Um, she's part of the opposition. He's part of the opposition. So the opposition comprises of different people from different backgrounds, different age groups, different genders, um, different religious beliefs, um, different student movements. The opposition encompasses different groups of people that must be acknowledged. Whether they are part of a political party or not, it doesn't matter. And you see, one of the one of the things I've come to realize is um, people don't like to to be termed as opposition. They see it more as a bad thing. But let me let me make this clear tonight to the Liberian people that. Um, once you are not for something, you are against it. Let me say this today. And you see this notion of neutrality. Uh, in politics, there is no neutrality. Whether you express your feelings or not, whether you associate publicly or privately, whether you associate with a certain group of people, you sympathize with them in your heart. Everybody has a position when it comes to politics. And so I still believe that um, the opposition is larger, is bigger. Uh, because there are a lot of people that feel disenchanted based on different issues, based on different situations, and how the country is moving forward. I believe the opposition is bigger. And it's not just restricted to a certain political party, or a person, or a group of people. Thank you, Steve Bollet. All right, now that you have brought in the scope of the opposition, uh, are you also saying that civil society organization, pressure groups, those of whom are always uh, in the business of holding government fees to the fire, though claiming not to be political party, can also be considered as opposition. Is that why you're making us to understand? Indeed. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I think you, you, you might have put it well in the most simplest of forms or terms. You see, life, life is such a way that life in itself is balanced, Mr. C. Life in itself is balanced. What do I mean by that? Life is either negative or positive. There is no middle part of life. You are either doing good or you are not doing good. And so when it comes to politics, people must understand that they are part of politics. It is one of our natures as human beings. Now, I will understand that some people might not want to officially associate with the opposition, but yet and still they have in mind or they are disenchanted. They are dissatisfied with how the country is being governed or how a group of people are governing the country, whether it's the CDC-led government or it is the it, it, it was the LP-led government, all the governments before, you know, um, these two governments. Now, the truth about this is, Mr. C.A., the Liberian people must understand that once you are not for something, you are in opposition to it. And so the different groups, what are the pressure groups, what are the student movements, what are the, um, 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 the, the, the marketeers, whether, as long as they're seeking national interests, as long as they're against what the government is doing, they're in the opposition. All right, thank you. Then that brings me to the question. Is the opposition bloc better organized than the ruling CDC coalition? Well, I would say that that's, that's a question that I will not answer with a yes or no. All right. Because, because um, let me put it a labyrinth way. It's a sticky question. It's a sticky question. And also, I would say this is a sticky issue that cannot just be answered by saying yes or by saying no. But I will say something here tonight that is very it will sound contradictory, but it will make sense. Okay. The CDC, to some extent, they seem together in doing what is not right. I will say it again. The CDC seem together in doing what is not right. Let me say this. In my times I have lived on earth, I've never seen a group of people united to do wrong, such as the CDC. I've never seen a group of people united to do wrong such as, this, as the CDC is doing now. You will see that the CDC will do wrong. They will, they will have surrogates pass around, spread out lies and disinformation. 
and they see it as a norm for the country or because they're protecting what they want to protect. So in that context, they are united. And you see, we who come from biblical backgrounds or understand spirituality, what happens is there is a force in unity. Now, if you unite to do bad things, you will succeed. If you unite to do good things, you will also succeed. So unity in itself is a force by itself that, 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 that cannot easily be reckoned with. Now, let's come to the opposition. I will say to you that the opposition at this stage Steve, is, is not united. Steve? Yes. Hold your thought on the opposition. Uh, are you making the assertion or you are insinuating that the CDC is a united force for bad and evil? Is, is that the point you're making? Let me not use the word, let me not use the word bad and evil. Let me okay. use the word wrongdoing. Or destruction? Let me use the word wrongdoing. I wouldn't okay. use I wouldn't use if I use the word destruction. That, that, that would probably be seen, you know, I want to use it in a way that people can, can decide how they want to categorize it. So okay. I would use the word wrongdoing because okay. wrongdoing can be in different contexts. So right. I'll say here they're united to do wrong and not to do the right things. So even, you know, I was just on the phone with someone and I was telling them that it is hard to support the CDC-led government to some extent because they are so bent on doing wrong that even when you decide to support them, they will do something to make you to start thinking twice, to not even want to support them. Because they're always falling in doing wrongs. And they're always covering the wrong with another wrong. But let, let's come to the opposition. I will say I want to be very frank. At this stage of the opposition, I will say there is not unity. It is a normal thing. Let me say it again. It is a normal thing at this stage for there not to be unity. It is a normal thing. And, and Mr. C.A., I, I will tell your audience, and I will tell the Liberian people why this is a normal thing. Now. For my line of work, there is something called groups. Now, when you see these different political parties come together, it's been about a year now since they came together. They are forming a group. Now, in the group setting, there are different stages. There are five different stages in any group setting around the world. That applies to any group, regardless of where you come from, who you are. It doesn't matter your educational status. It doesn't matter. In the very first stage, of any group, there is something called orientation. Now, in the orientation stage, what happens is that people are excited because they are meeting new people. They are, they are, they are putting forces together, so they're excited. They want to be part of it. That is the orientation phase, where people get to know one another. Another stage is the, the second stage, which is the power st struggle stage. Now, the power struggle stage is what you call the storming stage. And I'll say the opposition, as we speak, is in the storming stage. And that does not necessarily mean that it is bad. No, it is not bad. As a matter of fact, I want to say here to the Liberian people that this is a good thing for the opposition. For us to have this storming stage, it is critically important. Now, the next stage we go to, after the storming stage, we go to the cooperation or in integration stage. That is called the norming stage, wherein we start to now say, hey, we disagree before, but we can agree. We didn't agree on this one, but we can agree on this one. I think we can work together on this one. I think we cannot work together on this one. Then we start to form things that will bind us and hold us together in a group setting. Another stage that comes from there now is the performance stage. Now, the performance stage is what you will have after the elections in 2023. It will be the performance stage. So this is what I said. It is important. It is important for, this, for the opposition to have the best understanding that they are having now. And it is essential, it is critically essential that it happens now, that it does not happen when the opposition takes power. It shouldn't happen that time. It will show disjointment and division as we saw in the CDC this past few days between the president and the vice president. You understand? So we don't, we don't want to be on, we don't want to be on that side. We want to be, we want to be where in now we can speak to the issues now. Where the problems are, we can address them now. Thank you, so, Steve. I, I'm Thank glad you. this is happening. Thank you. Again, folks, you are watching Focus on Liberia, and our microscope today is on the opposition. They want power. They are going around here that they are the alternative, that they have better leaders, claiming to even have better messages and messengers. And so we want to see that. And so today we brought the opposition blog in to speak to us 
by answering the tough questions. Steve, how will you grade and compare the messaging and propaganda of the opposition bloc to that of the ruling coalition for democratic change? I think that's a that's a that's a beautiful question, Mr. C. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in when it comes to the messaging of the opposition, you will come to understand that the opposition has not come together on a one arm brother to say that um, we are speaking in one voice. They have not come together to some extent. What do I mean by that? The paper that was signed one year ago by the four collaborating political parties, it was not a bounding agreement wherein each political party could not function individually. It was Steve, not Steve, we will get to that component uh, sometime later in the show. I want you to speak to the messaging, the way you people in the opposition block communicate to the Liberian people how you communicate to earn their trust and covenant for them to believe in you. That messaging, that's what I want to speak to. How do you, how can you grade your messaging comparing that to that of the ruling coalition? I think at this stage, like I've told you before, before because we are in a storming stage, mm -hmm. we, are in, we are power struggling to some extent mm -hmm. within the opposition. Right. There has been some conflicting information from within the opposition. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to say pretty much that the opposition has not been able to have one voice. There has been different voices. There has been within the opposition. Yet, they want to get to the same thing or they want to do the same thing. So it might seem as though there is confusion. So let's take for example, let's take for a common example. Are you, are you saying it looks as though all there is? There it looks as though. No, it's, it looks as though. Let me tell you why. I gave okay. you a typical example in a few days. Mm -hmm. June 7 of last year, mm -hmm. when the CPP present when the, when the COP presented a petition mm -hmm. to the government, within the petition, there was the economic and war crime court. The government was petitioned to establish the World Economic Crimes Court. However, yeah. Emmanuel Savez has been pushing this agenda of the economic and war crime court. Some people will say from an individual standpoint. Now, you will come to understand that people will think that there are different messages here. No, there are not different messages. It's just okay. that different people have been prioritizing different things, yet and still, other people have incorporated all those things and decided to present it at once. But it is the same message. It's like, it's like we are going to the same place, but we are taking different routes. So are you trying to kind of brush aside this belief that the opposition is not preaching a unified message? Is that why you're trying to brush aside here that it does not exist and that your message is unified, except that it's coming from maybe different members of your your block and, and maybe at a different uh, uh, velocity? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, here's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is the opposition has been pushing one message. Okay. That message has been clear from day one. And what is that message? Regardless who, that there's bad governments, this government has failed, they have lied, the promises they made to keep up to the Liberian people, they have not lived up to it. Yes. And the opposition has been preaching that message as far as I know and I'm concerned. But here is it again. Different people have been taking bits and pieces and talking about it. So let's take, for example, you will see within the opposition block, some groups are more bent on and focused on women's rights. Does it mean that they're not speaking on the ills in violence? Does it mean that they're not speaking on the ills? Some people also have been focused on war and economic crimes court. Some people have been focused on justice now for, take for example, Samuel Tua should be fired for mismanaging our 25 million and people should be held accountable for the 16 billion. We are saying the same thing. People are just prioritizing different things at the same time. But it doesn't mean that we're not saying the same thing. Now, what is important, what is important is for us to put our message together so that we can have one messaging. It doesn't mean we are saying different things. That's not what it means. As compared to the CDC-led government, who will tell you one thing today? The, 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 I'll give you a typical example. I'll give you a typical example. The uh, uh, Minister of Communications will come and say different thing. The uh, summit where will come and say another thing. Another person from the spokesperson from the president will come and say something different. 
That's conflict. That is totally conflicting. As compared to the opposition, we are clear on our messaging. In as much that we do not agree on which one to put forward or who to champion what cause, it doesn't mean we are not holding this government's feet to the fire. We are in different ways, shapes, and form. Steve. Yes, sir. Message, good message, is always and always a good thing. But there's this saying that the message is good, but the messenger is bad. Do you have, talking about people in the opposition block, do you have better, effective, and responsible messengers? Is that something you can say here for a fact that you do have them? And, and Mr. Mr. C, I want to be on the record today. Okay. And this is where, this is where there has been the stormy stage within the opposition. Some of us has, have come around the opposition. We are human beings. We are not perfect. But one thing I want to say to the Liberian is this, though. The Liberian people is this. We don't need perfect people to lead the Liberian people. But we also don't need people who will put the Liberian people in more problems than they are already in. And this is the problem some of us have within the opposition. I want to say here, emphatically clear, that some members of the opposition who are propagating messages for the opposition, they should not be propagating messages for the opposition because you know why? They are the wrong faces, the wrong people to propagate these messages because they are still in bed with this government or they are indebted with this government. Look, Mr. C, I can hold you accountable for something when you and I are doing the same thing. It doesn't make any sense. And, and, and the next question is, is anything being done to correct that? Because what you said is it's a very good uh, 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 piece of information to know that there are some people who are messaging for us who should not be messaging for us, I mean, messaging for you because of their records. So what are you doing to correct that? And who are some of those people? Well, some of the things we're some of the things we're doing to correct that is some of the things we're doing to correct that is this. Um, I raised up a I raised up a serious concern the other day. I raised up a serious concern with the CPP, and I think I wrote it when um, when um, the CPP were responding to the president's State of the Union address or st national address. Yeah. I raised up that concern. Um, I saw Mo Ali coming out to speak on behalf of the CPP or to do some kind of little introductory or welcoming or something like that. And I said this, I was clear about it, and I stand with my words. And this is where within the opposition, some people don't like some of us. But let me say this. This is not about who likes me or not. It doesn't matter to me. Let me say this to the Liberian people. We must change the messengers. If we don't change the messengers, the people will see us as not serious people. And the reason I'm saying this, and I'm calling more Ali's name is because the COP have had two or three different protests. I stand to be corrected. It has you no results. But not only that, members within the COP, that include Costa himself, has admitted that this president gave him $5,000. In my honest view, that is compromise, conflict of interest, and they should not be speaking on behalf of anything. And I stand with that. I will not change that. I think it is the right thing to do for the opposition that we cannot be holding the government's feet to the fire. And we have people who say they are propagating the message. Yet and still, they are fighting indirectly against the same people for whom they are, they are probably giving the message. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense in any society. And listen, when we say some of these things within the opposition, people get pissed off because they, they think we are on, they think this mentality of popularity context is what's going to change Liberia. Let me say this, it's not going to change Liberia. We must change the way we do business. We must change our thought process. We must change the people that will propagate our message because you know what? Uh, um, optics are very important. Optics are very important. So if Steve. we put serial minor people who will hold this government feet to the fire without compromising, without getting involved with anything, I think we will move forward and probably get a message for this uh, the, 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 the opposition on a very serious note, and this government will take us seriously. Steve, uh, I, I'm glad that you mentioned the name of two individuals who believe because of the way they've conducted themselves or uh, should not be messaging for you because of who they are or are known to be. And because 
you think there might be a little bit or maybe a little more of uh, credibility questions, this individual should not be in the spotlight when it comes to being your face. Most definitely. Somebody will say that is a fair point. But again, some of these individuals, they are very effective in communicating. You might disagree with the way they do it. One person is Heron Costa. I will say publicly that I admire his ability to communicate in a more effective manner. What do I have problem with? I think his language gets so toxic. And public, right now saying it, his language gets public. And I wish he could refine it, but that's the man. But he's effective. So would you rather have an effective communicator, be it Custard or Ali or anybody like uh, Yeka Koloba? His language is also toxic, the way he says it. Is that the kind of messengers you need? People who are like, they are fighting a war against the other side of the political divide. Is that how you generate the results? I mean, in terms of numbers for the, is that what you want? So let me say this, let me say this, let me say this. Um, and I don't want to make this conversation about a certain people or a certain group of people, but because you um, you ask directly that names be called. So I, I hold no, I hold no, I hold back to nothing. Yeah. Because uh, I think it is the right thing for us to discuss the opposition as we should. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Nations are not built on public speaker, good speaker. That's not true. There has been speakers, there have been speakers that have lived before us and other people. They were great speakers. You can propagate any message you want to propagate. Anybody can propagate any message you want to propagate. The CDC led government is propagating messages around here today. The CDC government is doing that. But are they doing the right thing for the people? Are they hurting the people? What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say it's not about propagating the message. It's about living that same message you are propagating so that it is more effective. And again, I want to go back. This is not a religious contest or this person is better than this person or nobody's holy. No, this is not about it. I want to be emphatically clear. But I'm saying if we want to do serious thing, if we want to change the trajectory of this country, we cannot, we cannot in the opposition have people with tinted characters be the face of the opposition. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Then there is no opposition. There should be no opposition. Let everybody go sit and start making noise. Because what am I holding the president accountable of? Why should I hold this government accountable when I will go back and make deals with them? Why? It doesn't make any sense. So, that Steve, means- sorry, Steve. So, uh, uh, in terms of the content of your messaging, the yes, manner sir. in which you communicate, the civility of your messaging, uh, and, and how responsible you are, you know, you think will make you as an opposition block a more responsible uh, a block of the Liberian political community other than just allowing anybody to speak just because maybe they are effective communicator. Is that what you say? And you see, that has been a problem though. That has been one of our major problems in Liberia. Okay. That has been one of our major problems. We... Um, we look for temporary excitement. Mm-hmm. We look for temporary things that will create that little enthusiasm for a little while. Mm-hmm. But the same people that say these things are the same people that are problems to us or problems for us. Listen, um, focus on Liberia, Mr. C. Mm-hmm. I want to be emphatically clear again. If okay. the opposition must get serious, they must get people with integrity to lead. Do you know why most people are attracted to Darius Dillon at this point? No. So far, since he took over the Senate, in my belief, in as much that, you know, there has been some discrepancy about him to some extent, in my belief, he has lived up to the things that he said he would do. And that is critically important. That is important. It is not just about the messaging. Because we have heard lots of look. Let me let me, let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this in the Liberian way, in the simplest way. Crooked people can talk better more than sound people. Why? It does not mean they will do the right thing. Why? Because 
they've studied to some extent that that is their way to get away with things. Let me say this, Mr. Osir, let me say this. Let me say this. There are some people who are trained naturally to just be good orators. That's it. They're just good narrators, good orators. That's it. And that does not cut it for a nation. We have to rise above that as people. Look, we have to set people who are we look up to as leaders, we have to set them up to certain standards. And this is where we find ourselves today with this government. We cannot recycle these things. We cannot. We Steve, have to look, we have to make this change. Steve. Yes. I have not been around for so long though. But this is what I've learned. In politics, effective communication and effective communicators, persuasive ones too, can help to get you the numbers that you need to win. You were talking about it is not every good speaker or orator, you know, um, that, uh, you know, I think you said good people who are good at speaking. It's it, it, it more so that sometimes they are crook. And so that's why they have. I don't think that is the case with everybody. It might be the case. I think, I'm, not me, but it's the case with some people. Let's look at Barack Obama. He was a good guy. I mean, he's a good guy, good communicator. So he has all the qualities. And so because of his speaking ability, success was always on the side of the Democrat. You have some people in your maze who are good communicators, why you can't make use of that? I mean, you said it here that we are all humans. And so why you can't you know, use them instead of coming here and saying, oh, they are this and that? What's wrong with that? Mr. C.A. Yes. Mr. C.A. Yeah. It is good to win. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes to win. OK. But when you win, it must be sustained. OK. Obama did not only win the elections, because he was a good orator. Okay. No, Obama came to the table with character. character. Let me say this again. Mm -hmm. Obama came to the table with integrity, character. And that's what he brought into the White House. Today we are having problems with Donald Trump because he said what people wanted to hear. Same thing with George Weah, he said what people wanted to hear. But when he got to the presidency, what he said became a different story. We must change our mindset of wanting to hear what we want to hear. Sometimes you might not like who is saying what they're saying, but it is okay for them to do the right thing. Because even if they don't say what you want to hear, but if they do the right thing, it will benefit you. So when Obama was, a, even in as much as he was a good orator, he spoke well, or he speaks well, good, that was a plus on his part to attract people because you see, good speaking normally attracts people. It does not keep them or sustain them. And that is the problem. That's what we don't understand. We think that because somebody can speak well, so when they come around, or some group of people can speak well, when they come around, when people come around, the speaking will sustain them. No, that is not truth. It is the character, the integrity, and this thing that can sustain people. Speaking well will attract them. So I am not saying, again, that we cannot make use of people who are orators. But I'm saying that the characters have got to align with what they're saying. If not, we are wasting our time. And are you also saying they should not be the one in the forefront representing the face yes, that the you must have in the public view? Yes, if the characters are compromised, if there are people lacking of integrity, if there are people in bed with the same people that they are propagating message against, then they cannot be the face of anything. Of the of the opposition, it's a waste of our time. We are going nowhere. Steve Bullet there, not missing his words. Folks in cyberspace, space, my name is Anthony C. This is the hour of politics. This is focus on Liberia. Folks, if you have just joined us, do us a favor, hit that share button because we are just getting started. As you can see, Steve Bullet is speaking for Liberia and he's speaking his mind. And I am here asking question for Liberia and Liberia on it. Steve, let's look at this. The uh, ruling party, its supporters, its surrogates, its propagandists have accused the opposition bloc of 
only carrying out destructive criticism. Do you agree or disagree? I'll have to say some members of the ruling party of the opposition sometimes exacerbate some of the situation, fact. But I would say for the most part, this government creates the avenue and the lie, the fool the Liberian people, they trick the Liberian people, they steal from the Liberian people. And I said earlier, I said it earlier on, I said it earlier on, that these are some of the reasons that there exists the opposition today. Because you know what? The government is disappointing, very disappointing. Again, some, some members of the opposition exacerbate the issue at times, Yes, they do, and that is in everywhere, in every context, especially in the political arena, it happens. You have people who will make some things big, some of them will create stories. That's part of the propaganda or whatever. But for some of us, we are not in that business of creating lies. We want to stick with the facts because that's what's important to point out the facts and move on. It is not being personal. It is not attacking anybody. It is pointing out the facts, and those are the facts, and we move on. So if the government can lie, we say the government can lie. We're not, we're not exacerbating. We're not, we're not, we're not creating stories. We're saying the truth. The government can lie. It's been proven numerous times. And it was proven not a few days by uh, Smith Tobey, uh, one of the president's uh, spoke person from his office. I asked him on this show. I asked Smith Tobey on this show, where is the publication from the oil, the missing, the the, the, the gasoline shortage a few times. Where is the report? He said it was on the, 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 the mansion's website. It is not there. They may lie in public. And when you say they lie, then they take it personal. They get this. Same thing with the opposition. When people do win the opposition, you point it out, they say you're jealous. But jealous for what? At what point do we hold people that are in leadership accountable? At what point do we say the truth and remain objective without making excuses for people's behaviors? We must do that now. Thank you. One more question. Why would anyone be wrong to say to the to say that the opposition has been undermining the peace and democracy of the country with a support for consistent protests? Why would anybody be wrong to say that the opposition has been undermining the peace and democracy of the country? So let me say this though. Anyone who says the opposition hosting protests, especially protests that are peaceful, let me use the word peaceful because it is critically important for us to not just throw words out, mm -hmm. for us to look into the words that we throw out. Okay. It is critically important. Peaceful protests, that includes the nomenclature of the protest, the name of the protest or the title. Because some titles can be provoking. And you see, Mr. C.A., the reason why some people will say it will be wrong or it will be threatening the peace and the stability of the country is because we, not too so long ago, have returned from a civil war. So and one of the things that, that prompted our civil war was the fact that a president had to be dethroned. And so when you hear people saying, we want to do this process to take the president down, and I say, I want to I stand to be corrected today. And I like to learn. Anybody can send me an article. Where in people's stage of protest with a title, we want to take this president down or want to take this government down. It has never happened before in this, in this 21st century. You know why? Because these things have the potency to bring up right. It has the potency to divide a country. It has the potency to create war. Truth, I agree with that. Just those words has it to bring divides. But... When citizens decide to assemble peacefully, when citizens decide to assemble peacefully, regardless whether they are opposition or whatever, whoever group, when they decide to assemble peacefully, it's their constitutional right. There is nothing wrong with that. But again, let me be clear, because sometimes we can misunderstand each other. If the name of the assembly will create, will lead to violence or create violence, then the name should be changed or the title should be changed as to accommodate the peaceful protest because something can be peaceful 
but has a violent need, then that's contradiction as well. So you so are saying that you, you are saying that uh, messaging or words have meaning. And Definitely. it is the word meaning that you can depend on to know what the next person is saying to you. And so when somebody say, hey, for example, we are step down campaign. Yes. That is not a good message at all. The, the, the title is wrong. It's wrong. The title is, it's very provoking. All right. I will say that today from the opposition standpoint, I will say that title is provoking. It should not be used for that for we are whether for whoever comes, whether that Ellen, it was wrong doing Ellen time for them to say Ellen step down. It is wrong for anybody to say Joe, we are step down. Just the title alone is wrong. Thank you. Steve Bolev there. Again, that's making his words. Folks in Cyber Space, your host is Anson Nsie, your program, The Hour of Politics, your network focus on Liberia, your guest comfortably seated in the heart seat, Steve Bolev answering the tough question. Steve, let's go to another segment of this conversation. And this segment is the... Uh, the political leaders of the CPP and the CPP. So my first question in this segment, do you really have something called collaborating political parties? Do you really have that? Well, let me say this. Let me say this. I think I don't want to use the word collaborating because collaboration comes with in different contexts. Okay. I think at this stage of where they are in as much that there is no bounding paperwork or document to say, you know, this is how we're going to operate. Or like the CPP have said over and over that they are working on a document that will bound them so that they can collaborate. I don't want to use the word collaborating yet with them. I would say maybe they're working together on issues as of now, because they're not bounding yet. They're not bounding yet. So you will see, even within the CPP, you will see that ANC is doing their own thing, UP doing their own thing, LP doing their own thing. And so Darius Delon will go, even though he is going on uh, the binder or the name CPP, but truly, truly, when you look at, when you look at it, when he got elected, he got elected as an LP candidate, not as a CPP candidate. So you see the difference. So that means they're not collaborating to some extent. They're working on issues. They're coming together to work on issues. So it's just like you and I or Mr. You, I, Mr. Ja, we can work on issues at the time. Issues that arises, we can come together to work on and take care of them. But then we disperse, we work independently as well. So that's the stage they're in. Until they can sign that binding document to say, okay, Mr. C will not go again as UP candidate. If Mr. C is going, He's going to represent us now as CPP. So that means ANC, um, UP, LP, and ALP, all four of them will not have no, no different party names again anymore. The, the name that they will be binding on now will be the name that they will carry each of them. So it doesn't matter if that person came for ALP, when they are registered and they come to that agreement, guess what will happen? That, that person, whoever wins that seat, come October, let's say for example, come October, if the CPP sign a binding document come October, Dara Delon wins the Senate seat again. Guess what happened? He's not, a, he's not going to go as an LP candidate. He's going to go as a CPP candidate. And it will be said, it will be kept in the record in Liberia and around the world that he's a CPP candidate, not an LP candidate. I think, Steve, you have a point right there because as we speak, the National Election Commission has not received any communication indicating that there is something called the collaborating political parties. Yes. That is not that. So this talk about CPP is just muff talk. And so to those of you in the opposition block, somebody will ask you that you have told a lie in the faces of the Liberian people to say that you are collaborating political party and even giving a an acronym, CPP. What is the legal document that bans you? What is not done legally? It's not done at all. So CPP, if you think you are CPP, do it. And then you will be CPP. Until then, that is all mob talk. That is one shame and hypocrisy on the part of the so-called collaborating protocol parties. You need to get it right. You have leaders among you. A simple document that will bind you legally 
you are criticizing the current government of violating all the laws. I'm not saying you are violating any law. I don't know of one yet. But to tell the Liberian people that you are collaborating political party, it must be legal. And until you get that, please stop saying that because it makes you look bad. I will leave it right there and I inject my opinion in it. So um, no legal instrument up to now. I've heard Darius Diron many times talking about it. I've heard Mr. Cummings many times talking about it. We're working on it. It's going to three years now. You can't get a single document. And you want the Liberian people to trust you. Something that brings you to the front legally. You can't get it in more than two years. Anyway, Steve, throw light on that. I don't want to ingest something in here. So, Mr. C, let me say something first. Mm -hmm. You see, one of the things I've noticed about Liberian people is mm -hmm. when words are thrown, people take it and don't go research or don't look it up. Right. And in what context it can be used, because contexts are very important very in important. words, in situations, in places. So right. let's take, for example, I said earlier on, people can collaborate temporarily on issue. So let me say, let me give you, for example, the June 7. Every opposition black to some extent collaborated for the June 7. That let me true. tell you how let me tell you how it worked. They mm -hmm. collaborated temporarily for that day, for that particular course, or for that month, or for that length of time. Now it didn't mean that they were binding to stay in the collaboration. That's why you will see that people left after the June 7, and there is nothing wrong with it, nothing personal, nothing personal. So the CPP as a stand. They are collaborating parties to address issues of the nation at this point. Now, from what I've heard and from what I've learned so far, this idea kind of stemmed up from uh, Peace Be To Arches Councillor Charles Walker's Bronskin right after the elections so that they could have a unified arm to hold this government accountable for all the parties and then determine how they want to do it next. But here is the issue. Here is the thing. I will understand that people will run and say, hey, why is it? It's been a year. It's barely been a year. It's been a year now. Send the CPP being existent and they've been working on this document. Mr. C, I will go back again to what I said. Maybe some of your listeners didn't get it. In every group, there is something called group formation. For you to form any group, there are five different stages. The first stage is the orientation stage. So the document that you saw then signing a year ago, where they signed in public, the full political leader signed in public, was the forming stage. What you see them going through today to put a document that will bind them together, that they will submit to the National Elections Commission. The document that they are forming now, that you hear, you said, Darius Dillon can talk about it, Mr. Comis can talk about it, other people can talk about it. The document they are putting together now is the second stage of any group forming. It's called the storming stage. That's where people power struggle. People have fights in the storming stage. So it is normal. The good news is this. The good news is this. Every time I've heard each of these political leaders speak, they have never said that this will not hold. They say it will hold. Regardless of the storming, it will hold. So that tells you and I that this thing was not just going to come in one day. It was not just going to come in one month or in a few weeks. It is critically important for them to put this thing together, synchronize it so that it can make sense that everybody know what is in there and they are held liable for what is in there. Thank you. Again, folks in cyberspace, we are discussing the topic, assessing the possibility of an opposition victory in 2023, seated is Steve Bolle as our guest. Your host, Anson and Sia, your network focused on Liberia. Steve, does the CPP have leaders with credibility and respectability to take you through? I'll say emphatically yes, 100%. Um, if you were to ask my honest opinion, I would rather the CPP leading Liberia than the George Weah led government as we speak, because it seems as though we are retrogressing as a nation and as a people 
and things are getting worse and things will get worse under this government. Things will get worse. You know, when you say this, seditious and other people say, oh, yeah, yeah, you are praying for bad things to happen for your country. But this is fact. This is fact. I didn't impose it on the Liberian people. The government is doing everything they can to make things to be worse. So at the end of the day, things will be worse. So I think we have uh, in, the, in the opposition, and some seditions know that very, very well. They know that very, very well. They will say it behind closed doors. But when they come up, they will play that they don't know. But they know very, very well. So who are some of the uh, leaders in the CPP with credibility and respectability uh, to, 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 to make a ticket that uh, Liberian people can get behind? I believe at this, I believe, I believe at this point, I believe at this point, any of the CPP leader at this point, in my honest view, would be better than this government. Because you know why? No. They've seen how some of us can hold this government feet to the fire. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying it today to you, Mr. C, and to focus on Liberia, that some of us are not going away. And some of us are not afraid to say the truth. But I believe that they are the right people. And if given the chance, I dare and challenge any other CPP leader to misbehave or disappoint the Liberian people. We will come after them. They shouldn't think that this is just a judge. We are thinking. Somehow we're not in the opposition because of judge. We are getting nothing against judge. We are just trying to do nothing. I don't even know him like that. I put it that way. I don't know him like that. The day he starts to do the right thing for the Liberian people, I will propagate a message. I will support him. Until then, the challenge is to the CPP leaders. Steve. So I believe they are better off. Steve, uh, you, 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 may, you, you said something here. Yes. That the CPP leaders, you said any of them. Any. Can do a better job than President Weir. Yes. And you doubt that they will even misbehave because when they do, I mean, because of people like you. And others. And others. Yes. And so because they knowing how you stand on the issues, they will not misbehave. Yeah. I will say to you, that is not a guarantee. And if I paraphrase you uh, in a wrong way, please make that clear. I, I don't think that is a guarantee. The CDC, in my political lifetime, has been the fiercest <coughs> opposition political party. They were in Ellen throat. Yeah, them, they're in government. A lot of wrong things are going on. And you think the very people who have the fingers to point at the wrongs will have the same fingers today to point at the very wrong that they pointed at yesterday. But they don't. They are quiet. They are just murmuring. Mono's video is one of those. That guy is not man enough to mark the podium and tell the Liberian people these are the things that are going wrong. But he can hide in his bedroom and talk secretly just to consider it as liquor talk. So how is that a guarantee that because so, of people like you and others, those guys will not mess up? So let me say something to you, Mr. Mr. Sear. Mm -hmm. You see, we think because the CDC mounted pressure mm -hmm. on the Ellen led government, right. that would have equated to them doing the right thing. No, that is not true. And that's where we've been missing it. And that's where all of us as Liberians, we've been missing it. We think because people speak out, they will do the right thing. That is not true. One of the very first things we must go back to as Liberians, we must go back to people's track record. That is critically important. Now, if we go back to track records, we will see that in George Weah's life, George Weah has had no sustainability. He has had opportunities. He has not been able to sustain, maintain the opportunity he was given and the things he was given. For example. So, so, so for example, for example, George Weah in the Senate. You tell me today. You tell me. George Weah was there for two years. Tell me what did he do for Liberia? That's one. Let's forget about the Senate. Let's forget about the Senate. You tell me. Since George Weah amount to the podium and became world best, you tell me. What did George Weah invest in, took care of, sustained it, and has you result to benefit people or to benefit the Liberian people? You tell me. 
So you see, there is a track record here. So it's not a, that's why I said from day one. It is not about the making of noise. And the reason I am optimistic that the opposition will do better is because in as much that the opposition is making noise, the opposition is preparing and equipping people for the job. The CDC did not do that. All they did was to make noise, munya, 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 and make all the noise, Tokyo take around. So today, when they come to power, guess what happened? They think that they can reward people with jobs for, based on loyalty. And that is the problem. That's what's killing them. The people are not competent for the job. They don't understand the job. They don't know what they are doing. So it reflects, they will revert into stealing. They will revert into corruption. They will revert into violence. Because you know what? They want to protect what they know. All right. Steve, let me ask this question. Are the leaders in the CPP united? Or there is some kind of disunity? Um, I'm asking this question because uh, in very recent time, we heard from Benny Nayuri one of the political leaders, I don't know if he's still the chairman of the uh, CPP, the so-called CPP. And he says something and that did not go down well uh, with some folks in the uh, ANC and members of the ANC, some members of the ANC, you know, went to social media and they too had something to say. And uh, Mr. Costa joined me in the maze uh more like in defense of his political leader and he has his own beans to spill and then it became uh, a little more chaotic so that's why i asked the question is there unity among the leaders of the cpp or there is the unity i want to know so let me say let me let me answer your question by saying this in as much that unity is relative and people might see unity differently based on different circumstances in different places. I will say to you, there's unity. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why I feel there's unity. Remember I told you and I told your audience that in every group formation, there are five different stages. And I want to challenge anybody that will come on your platform. These, these five different stages, all groups go through them. What you see happening within the CPP is a normal thing that will happen when a group of people come together. Let me say this to you. One of the things that we should not sleep on as Liberians is not to be able to hold each other accountable while we are forming united together. No. People think as though if I were to tell um, Costa or Mo Ali or Yasendi or whoever it might be, or, you know, Prafeki, Kali, Chief Kali, or all the different guys, you know, if I were to tell them that they were wrong, that means I'm not united with them for one cause or for one goal. No, 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 no. That would be wrong. That would be hugely mistaken. It would be a gross mistake to make. Let me say this. The fact that these leaders have stayed together, even in their disagreement, shows to you that there is unity. My brother, I can assure you that there is unity. And you know what? Because the, the reason there is unity is because at the end of the day, regardless of all the small, small back and forth noise, they all want one thing. And the one thing that they want is the Liberian people should not continue to suffer under this government. All right, let me ask this question. We'll move to our final segment. And before that, I will read some comments from our viewers. Do the political leaders in the CPP have the ability and the humility to produce a single ticket for your 2023 campaign? I think 100% so. And let me say why I think so. I think uh, the document that is, um, I think I heard lately from Delon on one of his shows, I listened to him. I heard, I think day before yesterday or so from Mr. Comments, we were asking a similar question about the CPP document. Let me say this. Let me say this to your audience so that you will understand. When you hear people, 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 uh, the people, are governed by the constitution and that constitution a paper. So the reason I'm saying they will be able to form one group of people to lead this party or they will be able to get one group of people or one person or two people to lead the CPP entirely to 2023 is because this document they are pulling together will ensure 
that every member of the CPP, whether you like it or not, in as much that you are staying in the CPP, from the day you sign that paper, there is in no way, shape, or form you can easily get out of it. And let me say this. I want to be on the record for this. Let me be on the record for this personally. I don't know about other Liberian people. I'm committed to Liberia. I'm committed to the CPP. If I support anybody, you sign that document and you walk out of the CPP, I would disengage my membership from you. I would not support you again. That shows that you are not united. I'll say it again. And you see, th this is the mentality that we must move with as Liberians. We must be able to hold each other accountable. We must be able to tell each other the truth, but we must stick with the goal and the cause. I'm saying it again. If I support anybody, any political party now, in my support for you now, the day you sign that CPP paper, the day that paper come and you sign it, and you have any kind of disagreement and you decide to leave from there, I will not support you again. I will stay with the CPP. So you see where unity lies? Unity lies within the issue. And I believe this document will formulate the, the, the leaders so that they can come together to be one. I believe so 100%. All right. Folks in server space, again, you are watching Focus on Liberia. This is the hour of politics with me, Anson and CS. Steve Bolle is my guest, and we are discussing the politics <coughs> of the opposition bloc. We are assessing the possibility of an opposition victory comes 2023. Don't go nowhere. I have a question that my talk, our guest, I know he's a smart guy. He will find a way to get around it, but I will do all I can uh, to ask that tough question. And if you want that tough question, that question is, what makeup can be a winning ticket for the opposition block? Is that a Bwaka Cummings? A Cummings Bwaka? A Cummings Costa? or Cummings Delon or Bwaka Delon. And when he answers that question, he will tell me why the other makeup can be the best alternative. He must answer that question. But let me read your comments. Steve, get prepared. That's a hard one for you. So folks, we go to our comments here. So Steve, get ready for that one. It's a tough one for you. Uh, Joseph N.K. Wright. I am watching you from my pipeline resident in Pinesville City, Morovia. Thank you for watching all from the Monoland. Uh, Linus Wisse, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. You can't speak to the issue. I don't know. Uh, Grace Brown writes, you are lying. The president never gave Costa money during the time of the COP. Harris TK Johnson right? nonsense. Costa didn't compromise. Uh, let's see, Grace Brown again, Steve Bolle, you are jealous of Costa. <laughs> my man, the people say you are jealous of our man Costa, my man. This is talking nonsense in covenants. Oh, well, we, don't, we, don't, we don't do that, man. Uh, Ramsey, right? Costa was supporting the government at the time, bro. So let's get the facts clear. Ask strong Collie Rice, please ask your guests who in the opposition that he had been charged, who in the opposition have been charged with corruption. Uh, then we have the man Willows Butler, right? Who tells you a nation is not built by speakers? Orators are the people who change the face of Europe and the war. French Revolution started from orators. You guys need to focus on the issues confronting the country then envious of Heron Costa. Why are you running from one talk show host to the other? That person is going after my guest here. Uh, let me continue to read some comments here. Uh, Christopher A. Camara writes, character matters most, agreeing with our guest here. Grace is coming after you again. Stop lying, Steve. Go Liberia and organize your protest for the suffering people that will be successful. All right, let me see, let me take one more. James writes, Mr. Steve is speaking the hard truth with sincerity by considering key facts. The messengers must be practical with what they say. Few comments there, folks, keep your comment coming. I may find some time again 
to read some more again, folks. My name is Anson Nsia, your host on this program, The Hour of Politics. Comfortably seated is the man Steve Bode as our guest. We are discussing, assessing the possibility of an opposition political victory comes 2023. So Steve, we are in the final segment of our show. And this segment is the strategies for victory 2023. That is the segment. Our first question, which candidate selection option will project the opposition block as democratic? I repeat, which candidate selection option will project the opposition block as being democratic? This is why we ask the question. Let me put some context around it. Of recent, we heard about this uh, suggestion that was made by your protocol institution, the ANC. How do you guys call it? V what? Help me here, Steve. VPS. VPS. VPS is a suggestion that was made by your party. And I learned also from your Secretary General press conference just like you suggested VPS as a tool to be used for information. And he says it's a scientific tool that will give voters, your supporters, information that can use to make decisions. The United Party also, I learned from him, uh, provided the option of consensus where the candidate can be placed into a room and they can come out and say, hey, Mr. X is candidate one, make candidate, uh, uh, Mr. B is or candidate two, meaning president, vice presidential candidate. And uh, I think the other political party said, look, let's go to primary. So that's why I asked the question, which candidate, I mean, we have which candidate selection option will project you, the opposition block, as being democratic? So Mr. C. Yeah. Let me say this. When you choose consciously mm -hmm. to get into a collaboration, whether that temporarily or that forever, mm -hmm. with someone, you are on an equilibrium okay. to some extent. All right. So the idea of which candidate will be better off to be just we are, in my view, any candidate that the CPP provides and the Liberian people are not in their numbers will support that candidate will defeat just we are come 2023. And that is the most important focus I have. I don't know about other people. I am issue driven and I stick with the issue. I will criticize when there is need to be criticized. I will call out when there is need to be, when there need to call out. By the end of the day, I will say to you that amongst the four political leaders, regardless of the tool they use to come out, will who will be the head of the ticket? regardless of the tool they, they use and regardless of the system strategy or whatever they use, as long as they present that candidate to the Liberian people, we, it is on. We are supporting that candidate. So it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me the most is this. Even in this stage, the second stage, which is the power st struggle stage, let allow, let's allow the leaders to sit on the table discuss the issue and come up with a resolution that we, the people, can support because we are willing to throw our support behind the leaders. So I'm not here to say this person will be better than that one. The one will be better than that one. No, 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 no. If that's what you want to get from me, that will not happen because I am in support of whoever the CPP brings out. As long as that binding agreement is signed, we move on from there, we go forward. Thank you, Steve. And then uh, based on what you said, I will ask this question. Some time back now, the CPP, under the leadership of Benny Nan Wilfred Ure, I hope I get I got his middle name right, selected Ms. Telia Ure as a candidate for a representative election then in Liberia. Many people have criticized the decision because it was not done through a primary process more so because some people believe the idea of her dad being the chairman and she becoming a candidate when there are or were other qualified candidates and there was no a primary no primary process they considered that decision at a time 
has been undemocratic. It's on that basis I ask my question. So will you agree that that decision was undemocratic or not? So let me say this to you, Mr. Sien. Let me say this to you and to the listeners here. I'm not sure what the process was of electing Ms. Tilia Ure to come forward as one of the representation for the CPP at the time. I'm not sure. Coincidentally, her dad, Mr. Ure, having to be the leader of the CPP at that time. And so she emerged. Here is one thing I don't want to engage in. And that's what like when people like to engage in. I don't want to engage in speculations, gossip, and this. In as much that the other political parties did not come out with statement to say this, and they kept silent on it. My brother, we supported Tilia Ure, all of us, and I will support her again if she comes back. And no other party opposed it publicly to say we are against this. All the other small backlash noises, they're not important. They're Steve, not important. Yes. Steve, are you suggesting that? Because something happens, mm -hmm. what or I was wrong, mm -hmm. but the fact that no one opened it, comes up to criticize it, that mm -hmm. justifies it to be right? Is that what you're saying? Because that's why I think you're saying. No, so my question would be, my, I, will answer that, I will answer that question with a question though. Mm -hmm. How do we determine if that was wrong, like you said? Because again, had, the, had the other political parties come out and say, no, the process that you guys used to put Tia Ure forward was wrong. We are against it. Or you guys did not follow the right step. Maybe, um, let's, let's just say, um, hypothetically, Mr. Ure went and infringed on other people's rights and pushed his daughter through. Let's say it that way. But it was never said that way. There was no complaint. I am hearing members of different political parties doing mumbling, jumbling. So I based on that, to say that was wrong, when well, all those leaders who I can say, maybe some of them can bomb me or most of them can bomb me, should I say that it was wrong? So are we going to say too that that was the long, that was the long nomination to, to represent the, the CPP was wrong as well? So you see, I'm trying to say simply that if the facts come out that maybe he infringed on other people's right, then guess what happened? If the first came out and other political party made it available and there was there was record of it, then I will speak on it and say it's wrong. I'm not here to again, I'm not I'm not in support of any one person. What I'm in support of is for us to do the right thing so that we can get Liberia moving within the CPP. And if one person do wrong in the CPP, that it can be proven that they did wrong, then we call them out for their wrong and move on. But I'm not gonna say there to be frank with you, Mr. C and say, Oh, I think it was wrong for Tilia Ure to go and represent it. The political parties did not say, I'm yet to see any communication of any other political leaders saying it. I'm yet to see it. All right, so Steve, the case? Steve, I know some people will say fair point right there. Um, I don't have an opinion for them, but I have this question. Let's look at the optics. You know, the reason I'm trying to hold opposition responsible in politics, the opposition is a government in waiting. Yes. And what they speak against, they must be prepared to do. If you are talking the talk, you should be able to walk the walk. Indeed. We are has been accused of nepotism. Mm -hmm. I know nepotism, some of them might say, oh, only when you pull your family member in government. Mr. Yuri, being the chairman of the Collaborative Cultural Party, mm -hmm. now his daughter was selected. Mm -hmm. The optics, only the optics, in mm -hmm. your opinion, as a mm -hmm. fair human being, mm -hmm. do you think that uptake was a little bit off or not? No problem at all. I think, in the context of let, let's go in the let, let, let's be context, contextual here. Mm -hmm. In the context of optics, it was wrong. It is wrong in any way, shape, or form. It is wrong. It was wrong. But here is the fact again. Let's stick with the fact, Mr. Sony. Let's stick with the fact here. Mm -hmm. Why if? Why if? Behind closed doors, all the leaders agreed that Tilia Ure should go. Mm -hmm. And maybe they had no other person coming up at that time to contest in that area. Mm -hmm. Let's just say hypothetically, because your, 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 your question to me about Tilia Ure, mm -hmm. the optics of nepotism in that context, yes, it is wrong to some extent. It is wrong. I would have to agree with that. If, if, if Mr. Ure used the influence 
to, to ensure that his daughter was, was pushed forward, then yes. But I'm saying to you and I'm saying to the public that we must come to this notion of dropping away some of these small noises and address the issue. And the issue here is none of the political parties complain officially to say, why did Tilia Ure go? As a matter of fact, when Tilia Ure went, what happened? We saw that when this thing started with Abu, one of the major things that happened was this. When this thing started with Abu, what happened? All the political parties, the political leader went in support of Tilia when they were going to the second round. So that tells you and I, from an optics standpoint, say we want to use optics here as the measure, mm -hmm. from an optics standpoint, I don't see anything wrong. All right, Steve, thank you. Um, again, folks in cyberspace, you are watching Focus on Liberia. I'm answering, Steve, asking a question. Steve Bode, the guest, is answering the questions. All I do is ask the question. Asking a particular question does not mean that I'm trying to communicate anything. I'm only asking the question. And so, folks, share the show. More questions coming for our guests. So the question that we have given you earlier to get prepared for is here. What makeup can be a winning ticket for the opposition block? And how soon should that be? Will it be a Boaca Commons ticket, a Commons Boaca ticket, a Commons Costa ticket, Commons DeLong ticket, or a Boaca DeLong ticket? Okay, Mr. C.A. Yeah. Before I address the first part of your question, which I've already addressed, let me clarify mm -hmm. something here. All right. And um, I stand to be corrected, and I want to see this. Mm -hmm. If the four political leaders are going together mm -hmm. to formulate this document, I don't think Delon or Costa, I'm saying this again, mm -hmm. And I will, I will be on the record for this. I don't think they will sit in a hall to say all four all put a document together. Mm -hmm. Or will lead will be one person to be the leader for this. The rest of the three people y'all will sit down somewhere, we'll go grab Dillon, or we'll go grab Costa and bring them to be vice president or running mate. I don't think so. In my view, in my view, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. And the reason I'm saying this is because, first of all, these are mature men, one. These guys are experienced people, mature men and a the lady. They are experienced people in different areas of life. If they will sit there and do that, and it is enshrined in a document, then we will respect that as the people or as the voters or people who will probably get the message for the CPP. Only if it is enshrined in the government, in the document. But I'm saying this though, if it is not enshrined within the document, which I do not think, that will happen. Then no need for us to discuss Costa, Delon, or any other person to be running mate to anybody. I will, for that, I will not address that part. Let me address your part, the other part. Again, I will say it again. Any of the four leaders that emerge as leader and vice, they got my support. Thank you. And I think they will get the support of the Liberian people as well, because the Liberian people are yearning for change. Uh, Steve, at some point ago, Mr. Herring Pedro Costa, I listened to him. And he's someone, I believe, who supports the opposition bloc, DLA. And I will say with everything he got, he is one of your messengers. Whether or not you have quan with how he does it, but he is one of your powerful messengers. In one of his podcasts, he said that a ticket for the opposition should have a mixed composition. I might be using different words, but what he meant then, or what he was trying to communicate, that he will not support a ticket of two old men, no. He will not support a ticket of two old men. A ticket from the opposition should carry 
somebody who is a younger person. That was what he said. And until he sees that, he's not sure how he's going to support a ticket from the opposition block. And it is on that basis I ask the question. So let's do hypothetical here. If the consensus is that let's find somebody more experienced and find somebody younger. Who will be your younger candidate and who will be your older candidate? Well, let me let me clear something up first before I address that question because I think it's important for us to mm -hmm. not only clear the foundation but lay some premises. And I want to clear the air here. You know, our people sometimes, in a much that they're the most important people, some of our people find reason to label people or to find problems with you. But that's okay because I'm a Liberian, I was still Liberian, and I've known that. But I just want to clear the air. I have no issues with Costa, but I also will not hold back when Costa does wrong. No, I don't do that. I don't subscribe to that. And I will never, I don't care who it is. As a matter of fact, I'm on record of having issues with Delon. When Delon, I felt betray us when he signed that deal um, about you know people in the diaspora. I had a problem with him. Yes, and I voiced it out. I had a serious problem with that. You understand? And that was just the initial stage where he had just gotten into power. So does that mean that when when Mr. Cummins does wrong, well, not call him out? Does that mean that Mr. Yue does wrong, well, not call him out? Mr. Bwaka or uh, Ms. Yombli Kanga does wrong, well, I will not call him out? No, that's not me. I don't know about other Liberian people. But I want to say this. As you see my face, the way it look, that's how I put my things. I don't hold malice. I don't hold anything against. Harry Costa is a brother. He's a friend of mine. As a matter of fact, we communicate. Some of you who are jumping around, writing all kind of funny, funny thing, you enjoy yourself. It's not a bad thing. And as you get mad, what it tells me as Liberian, what it tells me, it shows me two things. It shows that people who get mad, they're children of God. So that means it tells me that you are a child of God. That's the first thing. The second thing, it also tells me that I've gotten your attention on the issue. So I want us to keep on in that, environment, in that atmosphere. It doesn't bother me. But let me get to that, that your hypothetical question, Mr. C.A. The hypothetical question, I normally don't answer hypotheticals. The reason I don't have answer hypotheticals is because Costa is a Liberian. He's entitled to his view and his opinion. Does that mean that the CPP will live up to that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because then Delon could wake up one morning and say, well, we need to have this thing. This thing needs to be a male and a female thing. You see? The everybody starts having their opinion. So when people have voice and influence, when people have voice and influence, it does not mean that they make the final decisions. That's not what it means. So as it is now, I will say to you, I still lean on the four political leaders. And two of them will emerge. That is my honest belief. Until I lay my head on the documents where it has that stipulation to say we can come out of the box and select somebody else. It doesn't necessarily have to be one of us to be vice chairman or vice president or running mate. Uh -huh. Then we can come back on the show. I will definitely make supposition or speculation. As of now, Mr. C.A., I will not answer that question because I don't, I don't base into that. All right, Steve, uh, then I will come to this question. Uh, you are now prepared uh, to jump the gun to give me a possible winning ticket for the I've opposition. I've given you a winning ticket. I've given you a winning ticket for the opposition. And what any, is that any ticket? Two, any two of the four political leaders right now that are in the collaboration, any two of them, that is a ticket I've presented to you. Any two. Steve, that is not a ticket. I know a you ticket. are a very smart man. Any two. Okay. So, what do so, you mean by any two? So, I mean, what I mean, Mr. C is you got four people. And the truth of the matter is of those four people, Two of them, two of them will have to support two that will go as vice president and president. It, this thing, there is no beating around it. You have four of them vouching for the same position. And there are only two that can run the ticket. You don't expect me to go out of the box and bring somebody in. If I do that today, let me tell you the truth today, Mr. C. And this is where sometimes we tend to dishonor people who are leaders. And I don't do that. These four leaders, I am hoping and praying that the two leaders for 2023, president and vice president, will emerge from amongst them. 
That's my, that's my honest view. And that's my honest hope. However, if the document comes out and say they can pick somebody else, let's have another show like this. And I will give you who preferably I would prefer. All right, Steve, saying you do not want to give me a ticket, <laughs> I give I'm going to give you a ticket. Okay. <laughs> and you will tell me if I'm wrong. Or maybe let's let forget about the world wrong. Whether or not that ticket you know, can be considered an option or a better ticket. And that ticket I'm suggesting to you for the sake of this conversation, folks in cyberspace, I, I, I don't have the power to decide for the opposition block. I'm playing the role of a middleman here. So my suggestion, just for the sake of the conversation, is a Boaca Cummings ticket. Is that a ticket? Steve Bully will support. And if yes, why will it be a winning ticket? Let's just hear. Mm -hmm. I'll go back to what I told you. Okay. And what I said was a Boaca comments is a winning ticket. Okay. A comments URA is a winning ticket. A Boaca um, 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 Yumbly is a winning ticket. So any mixture with Inno 4, you pull it, in my view, is a winning ticket. And I will support any that emerge of those four. As long as they sign a banning document, any of them that sign a banning document, I will support any two that emerge. Any two. I will not say here today and say, only a Boaca ticket can win. A Boaca Comics ticket can win. Only a this ticket can No, I don't want to, I don't want to be putting that little box, no. Mind you, I am in a collaboration. And if I am in a collaboration, I must equally respect the rights and other leaders that are in a collaboration as well. That's where I stand. I don't worry about other people. But for me, that's where I stand. And because the question is directed to me, I wish and pray and hope that all Liberians could see this this way so that we can move forward. Steve. Yes. It is about numbers. I, 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 I have no qualm with what you're doing. You're playing, you're playing it safe, uh, you know, to avoid confusion, you know, in the collaboration. Uh, I think it's necessary. Folks in cyberspace, at this time, I want to welcome a partner and teammate here at Focus on Liberia. <coughs> Her name is Lady DJ. Lady J, welcome to the Hour of Politics with me, Anthony C. Hi, Anthony. How are you? Steve, how are uh, you? Hi. <laughs> hi, Lady J. All right. And so, Steve, I was, I was saying earlier, it's about normal. You said a Boaca Nyombli ticket can win. It's about numbers. What, I mean, where the numbers will come from? What, how, let me see. I don't see the numbers that Nyombli will bring. So, so, so let me say this to you. Mm -hmm. Let me say this to you. Let me say right. this to you. Mm -hmm. In as much that politics is about numbers, which mm -hmm. is a factual statement, mm -hmm. we need numbers to win in politics. All right. But you see, when the people are resolved, when the people want to do the right thing, when the people are united and committed to a cause, mm -hmm. like they did in 2017, mm -hmm. whether you have brought Jesus and Joseph, they would have voted for George Weah. I'm saying okay. to you today, Mm -hmm. seeing the trajectory in which the country is going with a right. level of disappointment, mm -hmm. disenchantment, and with the way this government is proceeding and unrepentantly refusing to do the right thing, I can say to you, of those four political leaders, if you were to bring any two pair, the Liberian people would gravitate towards them. Steve, earlier you told me about character, something I agree with. That character matters a lot. And you're looking at the uh, the dynamics and you think that, oh, because the political variables, uh, what should I say? The political climate is favorable for the opposition, a bad economy, uh, you know, noise here and there, but corruption. So whoever the opposition blog, you know, uh, put up, I mean, it's a victory for them. Uh, uh, we are, some people are complaining. I see this did it, and now this is what we have. Is that why you're suggesting that you want to do? Not, not necessarily. Not okay. necessarily. 
Let okay. me go back. Let me go back and let me go back and, and, and rephrase what I've said. Maybe All right. you see, Mr. C. A. Mm -hmm. I want to say this again. When you choose to go into a collaboration, you must respect every member of that collaboration. You must. And every member of that collaboration must give, be given equal right and opportunity as well. Now, in that context, let's keep it in that context. Do you think, do you think it would be fair to the four leaders of the of the of the, the, the collaborating political party if they have now willingly said, hey, I will step aside, or hey, these two guys can run, or this lady and this guy can run, or let's bring someone in different and put it into a document. I don't think it will be fair, it will show disunity. We are speaking about unity here. And you see, one of the things unity does not do is this though. One of the things unity does not do is this. Unity does not say, because we are united, so I got to pick and choose. When you are united in a fight, you work together to achieve a common goal. And I can say to you, because the common goal here, the common goal here is to ensure that the George we are led government come 2023 is not around because we cannot afford for our people to continue in this mess. Oh, Steve, how are you going to do that? And this is where we started off. Remember I told you in a group stage, there are in a group formation, there are five different stages. Yeah, what yeah, you, you, you said that, but give me your political mathematics, you know, your political literature. You know, so, your so, political know-how to getting job we are out or uh, democratically. So 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 here is here is one of the here is one of the facts. Mm -hmm. Here is one of the facts. In 2017, let, let me get let me take you back to history a little bit, or to your to your, your audience to history a little bit. In 2011, when the CDC government ran, the percentage they brought to the table in 2011, in, in 2005, they came out with 28.3%. 28.3%. They never had a number. In 2011, they came out with 32.7%. They lost the election. In 2017, they decided to say, said, let's have a merger. Let's come together. Let's bring two more forces together, which was the NPP. Now, mind you, NPP was a grassroots party. Now, with the CDC-led government, in the first round, ending up with 38.4%. They came out and merge with the other people, they ended up winning the election with 61.5%. Now, if they won with 61.5%, and we see all the rift that's going on, mathematically speaking, the CDC has lost so much favor, not only with the grassroots, they have lost favor with people who were in the opposition, who stood on the fence, who are holding themselves guilty now that we got to do this thing right. But most importantly, most importantly, let me tell you the truth today. The opposition, if we stay united in this context, if we see all the political leaders as equal, let's come together, let allow them to make the decision. We're all making noise. Like we did with Darius Delon. We supported Darius Delon religiously. We supported TLA UA religiously. I can assure and ensure you that the CDC led government will be defeated massively. Even if they try to cheat, it will not work. All right. So these are the these are the mathematics we are looking at. We are projecting the numbers. We are projecting um, the productivity of CDC. We are also projecting. We are also collecting data of how people are thinking, how they are feeling, uh, how they see the country, um, the trajectory in which the country is going. So all of these factors, when it put into play, the numbers are not on CDC side. The numbers are not on the side. All right. All right. All right, folks in cyberspace, space, we have been discussing the topic assessing. An opposition political victory comes 2023. And Steve Bode have been answering the tough question and I have been asking them. Folks, we are coming to the end of our broadcast because in the next seven minutes or so, we should have another broadcast coming up. But more so because we have exhausted our topic for this program, the hour of politics. Don't miss the next show that is coming up. That show is our sex talk and relationship conversation with Lily J. You saw her read there all said to go into the topic. If we want to keep the peace in the home, you have to be able to play your part. And that's what that topic is all about. Steve Bully was watching and he said, hey, I'm a small boy. You guys are talking big thing. Yes, that's what we do. We talk big thing for Liberia. Steve, I want you to close, but this time close with 
the political literature. Close with your political literature and please don't make it long, one minute. By political literature, what message will you win? It said the message of accountability and transparency. What message? Close. Let me say this. I've never been hopeful in my times than this yeah. time. I've never been hopeful. And my message will be there is hope. What the Liberian people need to do is to do the right thing. And I know the Liberian people can do the right thing. I know that even in their quest to want to do the right things, they've made mistakes by entrusting the country into the hands of guys who are not serious, who are not ready, and they think this is a joke or play. But I want to say to the Liberian people that there is still hope. And that hope has not died. That hope has not died. It remains awakening daily. And this is why sometimes people say, oh, you go from talk show to talk show, you do this, you do that. We want to enlighten the minds of our people. Hope has not died. Let us not give up on our country. Let's do the right thing. Regardless of our political differences, regardless of our differences with people, let's unite. Let's allow the CPP to hold. And above all, let our biggest focus be on ensuring that in as much that the CDC-led government has refused to do the right thing, they must be voted out. Until they can choose to do the right thing, they must be voted out come 2023. That being said, I want to say I trust and hope in the Liberian people for the future, for the young people, for generations to come. When you make mistakes in life, it does not mean that is the end of your life. Let us give ourselves another chance. Let's give good people, people who mean well, people who want to do the right thing. Let's give them another chance. Let's come out and support the right cause, the right people, and the right thing. That being said, I want to say thank you, Mr. Sia, and um, it's always a pleasure being here. And, you know, whenever you are ready, like you did, let's let's do this and send me an invite, and I'll look at my schedule and work it out. Um, I should look on Jessica's show sometimes later to see what she got it tonight. And if they're talking bunch of rural routine, I will not be there again. I'll run away like I did last week because I'm on an age. Thank you so much, and thanks for all you do. I want to say thanks to our listeners. God bless Liberia. Let's continue on to do the right thing for our country, and let's continue on to hold each other accountable in the right way, in a respectable manner. Let's honor each other in everything we do. Thank you, Mr. C. Thank you so much. Steve Bullitt, right there closing, he said the Liberian people will do the right thing for the future of the country, for the future of their children. They will do the right thing to vote an opposition ticket that will help to deliver them. Folks, this is how we come to the end of our broadcast. Your host, Anson Nsie, your program, The Hour of Politics. This is how we will close. Don't miss our tomorrow debate, Friday debate, the topic, standing on the promises of President Weah. Are we standing or are we stranding on the promises of Weah? This is how we will draw down the curtains. Until we see you again, my name is Anson Nsie. The network is focused on Liberia. We educate, we elevate, we promote all things Liberia. And bye-bye.